All right, guys, here we go. We are going to do Acts chapter 14. I know we did Acts chapter 13 for 7 million years, but we finally moved on. We're in chapter 14 now. So let's jump right into the text. It's going to be some, where am I here? There we go. It is going to be some more mapping and some stuff like that. So get your map brains ready. Oh, focus, focus. There we go. Focus, focus. So remember how they shook they shook off their um, their foot dust, right? And they left the town. That gross, gross foot dust. So now in chapter fourteen, and it came to pass in Iconium. All right, we didn't read very far before we needed to turn on the map. Okay, so screen share, find the map, open the map. Here we are. Okay, so Paul went down and he did this. Cyprus Island, right? And then he came up and he landed at Perga and he went into Antioch. And that's where we were just looking at the town of Antioch. So now they travel to Iconium. Iconium. Right. This is the other Antioch that they started in originally. Okay. So there's a few of those things. So let's open that. Now I'm going to, can you guys see me? Am I on the big screen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. I think we're still going to do square maps just because they're easy. But now we need more space for Turkey, right? We're not going to make it accurate on size. And that's okay. Okay. We got Cyprus. We got the Nile, Dead Sea, Sea of Galilee. All right. All right. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, that's showing up all right. And then we're going to do. He landed here, and he went there, and then he landed there, and he went there, and now we're going to be here. So let me get the red line to show the travel. Okay, I don't know if the red line is showing up. Yeah, it is. That's pretty cool. All right, now I'm going to put in the names. All right, we're not going to do all the names because we don't need them all, but this is the Antioch that he just left. All right, Antioch, and I just thought of a fun joke, and I'm going to erase it, and I'm going to call it, how many segmented bodies do ants have? Just three? Three. And then six yeah. legs? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah. Antioch? Oh, not eight. No. I, th I did, yeah, eight is, um, what's it, spiders. And right now they're in Iconium. That's how you spell Iconium. And if you want, you can do it like this. You can draw an eyeball. Conium. I don't know if you want to. Do an eyeball and a hair comb and then eum. And then eum. Oh, I. Con. Eum. As an ice cream cone, right? Yeah. All right. Well, if we do that too long, we're going to lose lose a lot of time so there he is he went from he went from where's my finger antioch to iconium Whew, that was hard to do with my finger all right <laughs> back to the test if you got your bibles we are looking at acts chapter 14 and it came to pass in iconium that they entered together into the synagogue has he done that before did he start in a synagogue before yeah. Well, and we talked about that, right? Because that's where all the Jewish people would be. They would be interested in the message. They entered the synagogue of the Jews and so spake. They started teaching that a great multitude of Jews and of Greeks believed. So here is Paul, and he's got his mouth open, and he is just speaking. There's his hand, his preaching hand. And is he preaching up a storm again? He's preaching up a storm, but it's a happy storm, right? He's not yelling or anything. And there are people that are listening and they're believing, all right? This guy has to have a long face so I can fit him on. They're listening and they're believing. And that is the hair of belief or something. I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have room for much else. Okay, they're believing, now this is interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna color this word belief in blue because I noticed for the first time it's in contrast with something. 
But the Jews that were disobedient stirred up the souls of the Gentiles and made them evil affected against the brethren. Okay, so we've seen that before, that there are some people who turn up their nose to it and they don't believe, right? That's kind, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a bad thing, but it's not new, is it? So I guess I should give them the hair of disbelief. Okay, but it doesn't say they disbelieved what does it say i'll color it in blue so you can read it some Disney. learned right isn't that an interesting comparison belief should be the opposite of unbelief that's that's the way it is okay you believe or you do not believe those are the two opposites but the Bible doesn't just speak in those kinds of um, simple opposites. Sometimes it compares words. And so it says some listened and they believed, and then the others were disobedient. Isn't that an interesting comparison? It usually would be belief, unbelief, obey, disobey, but it jumped down and did a different word. And I think that's really cool. That's something to think about. I'm not going to tell you what that means. You got to figure that one out on your own. Okay. And so these disbelieving ones, these are some Jews. Here is a Jew who did believe. And here is a Gentile. I'll give him a G on his chin. And it looks like he's got a little beard. That's a Gentile. And he's believing. And But this Jew is disbelieving. So some of the Jews are believing. And some of the Jews are disbelieving. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what they're disbelieving in, they're probably disbelieving in the story of Jesus. They want to say they believe in God, but they don't want to believe in Jesus. That's probably the idea. Okay. I'm going to make this big. Long time, therefore, they tarried there, speaking boldly in the Lord, which bear witness unto, oh, sorry, which bear witness unto the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Okay, fancy words that say they preached for a long time. They did it in the Lord, okay? They were bold. But what did God do when they were preaching? God was granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. What does that mean, signs and wonders done by their hands? Miracles. Miracles. Good. Miracles. Miracles. So not only were they doing it, but God was helping them with his miracles. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part held with the apostles. And when there was made an onset of both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to and treat them shamefully. That's super old-fashioned language for be jerks. I don't think the Bible will ever say be jerks, but you get the idea. They're going to treat them badly. And to stone them, that's more than just being bad, right? That's 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 Murder. really bad, right? Let me let me draw this guy angry. He's got angry eyes. And he's got his teeth, he's gnashing his teeth, and he's throwing a rock. Shoo, shoo. That's what the, that's what he's wanting to do to Paul and Barnabas. Right? They didn't get a chance to. That's what he wants to do. They became aware of it and fled unto the cities of Lyconia, Lystra, and Derby, and the regions about that. Okay. Okay. Come on, Mr. Machine. Okay. And they there they preached the gospel. Here's an interesting word. It says that they fled. You guys know what the word fled mean, right? It's the that's yeah. it's past tense for the word flee, not the bug, but the activity to flee. What does it mean to flee? To run away. Run away. To run away. So when they were going to get stoned and they ran away, what do you think about that? Was it good for them to run away or should they not run away? Well, it was 
was good so they wouldn't die. I think they ran away so they could spread the gospel. Yeah, right? Um, is it better to stay and fight and throw stones back at the people that are throwing stones at you? No. 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 If they run away, does that mean they failed? No, it means they're trying to, no. to stay alive. To they're trying to live and, and continue doing what God wants them to do. Yeah. And many people did believe. So even though they got to run away, there were believers, right? And if you read yeah. the prophets, if you read through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and um, Ezekiel, you'll find out that God told, especially Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Isaiah, they're not going to listen to you, but you preach anyways. <laughs> so that means you're not failing if people get angry. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So now. Yep, it's them being they, stubborn and not wanting to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Their fault. All right, so now we need to get the next cities. Okay. Oh, wait, wake up machine. Here we go. They're in they're in the area of Laconia, Laconia, and then went to Lystra and Derby. Okay. Does that make sense? So down and then down to the right. All right, let me open that up and I'll stop that. And I'm going to oh you I don't have to share, it's right here. Okay. So they went to Lystra and Derby. I don't have a lot of room right there, so I'm just going to put, wait. Is Lystra on the left? Yes. They went to Lystra and Derby. I'll spell them out down here where I have room. They went to Lystra and Derby. Derby. All right, they went to Lystra and Derby. Okay, that's where they went. I'm gonna, I'll turn this off so you can see it. We well, can't really see it because it's dark, but there was a glow. Whoa, that was a bright light. Okay, so does that make sense on the map? They went down to Lystra and then the, and then over to Derby. They're, they're just going to these places and they're trying to uh continue spreading god's word even though people are fighting them about it and this is really rude okay all right verse eight at lystra there was a certain man impotent in the feet a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked okay so what does that mean what does that mean about this guy Lame. He's lame. He's lame. So I'm going to give him wiggly feet, right? Because that means they don't work. Actually, I, I guess I just drew wiggly legs. I'll do... <laughs> no, what I'll do, I'll draw... I'm not going to draw his legs because I like to draw the big, beefy, happy legs. Because you know it's what, what's going to happen, right? And I'll leave him blank. There he is there. He's got ears. And he has... I'll give him hair of belief. Okay. Um, he'd never walked, never had walked. I'll put pants on him though. There we go. The same heard Paul speaking, who fastening his eyes upon him and seeing that he had faith to be made whole. So here's Paul and Paul's been preaching, right? We'll put out his preaching hand. But when Paul looks at this man, what does first he fastens his eyes on him? I think one of you guys did this the other day. I because I didn't use that point, but here I'm gonna make his eyes really jump out and look at him. <laughs> He's really fastening his eyes on him. <laughs> you guys have seen cartoons, the eyes going bug-eyed. All right. He fastened his eyes on him. What did he see in this lame man? He saw that. He wanted to learn about God. Yeah, because it says he had faith to be made whole. What does it mean to be made whole? To be made like God, but to be made good. Well, that's one big idea, but what's the very big problem that the lame man had? He could walk, so he it was a lame man. And so Paul saw 
that he had faith to be uh, to be made whole. What what does faith look like? This is a very mysterious passage to me, and I like to wonder what did this man look like? Maybe he wasn't listening like this. <sighs> Have you listened like that before? Maybe he was listening yeah. like this. Or, or writing notes or, or really thinking about. I don't know what he looked like. I don't know what Paul saw, but it's a fun thing to wonder about. It's a great mystery. Seeing that he had faith to be made whole, he said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he leapt up and walked. I'm going to make that an exclamation mark. So here he's got big old awesome feet. Big old feet. Big old muscles. He's got... And I'm going to make the foot come back here because he's just dancing with his knee. And he's got a big old mouth. And he's got happy hands. There he is. And I'm going to write the word faith on him. Because that was the thing. That was the thing that we that he was able to see. When Paul looked at him, he said, this is a man who has faith to be made whole. And do you think the important thing is that now he has working feet? Or is it that he can be whole with God, right? That he can be whole with God. Whole with God. Okay. And so usually what happens, Paul and Barnabas, they will do a, a miracle like this, and, and everyone will listen to their preaching, right? Let's see what happens now. And when the multitude saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying, in the speech of Laconia. What does it mean, in the speech of Laconia? They're, like, talking in Laconia. Not language. They're talking in their own language, which makes it sound like maybe Paul won't know what they're saying at first, Okay. So it's going to be a little bit different. That that's a fun part of the story. Well, okay. He has the power to. Right. He has the power to speak languages, and then they're going to find out a little bit later. This is what they say: The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men, and they called Barnabas Jupiter, the god Jupiter, and Paul Mercury because he was the chief speaker. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do they think Paul and Barnabas were? Gods. They thought they were gods. Why? Why would they think Paul and Barnabas were gods? Because, because they, they just didn't they heal the man. They did. Isn't healing like that? Isn't a miraculous healing? Miracle. Yeah. Isn't that the work of a god? Yeah. Who did the work? Did Paul really do the work? No, no. It the real was God, God. It was God. It wasn't Jupiter or Mercury, though, right? So they're very wrong because it's not Jupiter and Mercury. Those are just idols. But they're pretty close because they think it's a God and it is God. Isn't that funny? All right. So now let's. I wonder what Paul and Barnabas look like as gods. I mean, so here's Paul, and he's got his beard. You can draw them you know like Thor. Like what do you, what does he look like, Jack? Do you know? Yeah. He has thunderbolts. All right. And so, what about Mercury? Doesn't Mercury have? I'm going to draw a thunderbolt on Barnabas. What about Mercury? Doesn't he have the uh, the feet with the uh, with the wings on it? Is that Mercury? All right. So then I, that means I have to draw feet on Paul. There's Paul. And he's got foots. And we'll draw little wings on him. Now. We know Paul and Barnabas didn't have these wings and things, right? We 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 know. I'll give Barnabas, okay, now I'll give him legs, but he's got that lightning bolt. Okay, so there they are. This is what they thought, and you can put question marks, like, are these men gods? No, 
but it's a funny, it's kind of a funny moment, isn't it? Yeah. And the priests of Jupiter, whose temple was before the city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifices with the multitudes. Uh-oh. But when the <laughs> apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and sprang forth to the multitude, crying out, saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We are men like the passions of, with you and bring you good tidings that you should turn from these vain things unto the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, who in the generations gone by suffered all the nations to walk their own ways. And, he, and yet he left not himself without a witness and that he did good and gave you from heaven rains and fruitful seasons, filling your hearts with gladness. All of a sudden, Paul gives a mini sermon. Okay, so we got to unpack the mini sermon. You know, Paul, if he ever gets a chance, he's just going to start preaching. All right. Okay. Here is point. Then, yeah. It's kind of like when Cornelius um, was so excited to see Peter and he started worshiping him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good comparison. That's a really good comparison. And you know what? If I was there, I would have probably thought the same kind of thing. Don't you think? Don't you think it'd be easy to believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Like you had yeah. Especially because we haven't read the Bible and we don't know it's silly if if yeah. that is. Right. And so I think it's a funny story, but I don't think that these are just dummies. Does that make sense? And if some of them were yeah. They might have believed in God, but when they saw that and everybody was saying they were the Roman gods, they might have could have been. It doesn't, but it doesn't say that if there were Jews in that town. So that's kind of curious. Yeah. Um, all right. So here's his first point. The first point is we also are men. Okay. We aren't gods. We're just men. And that's pretty similar to um, Charlotte, like what you said that Cor he said to Cornelius. And in Revelation uh, um, when he kept on worshiping the angels. Yeah, there's a similarity there. Okay. Um, oh, wait. That's point one up there. But point two begins right here. We bring you good tidings. Good tidings is the old-fashioned word for what New Testament idea? The good The good news, which is the... Gospel. gospel. We bring you the gospel. Maybe I should put it too. We bring you the gospel, meaning turn to the living God. Not these fake gods, not these gods that could die even, but the living God. And what did this living God do? Well, he, he made stuff. Made. What did he make? Well, he made heaven. He made, he made earth, every single thing. he made the sea, he made all that is in them. Oh, he, so he, he made everything. Yeah. <laughs> Who let, uh, in the past, let you walk in your own ways, but, not, but he didn't go without witness. He said he's shown himself. God um, let people worship their own gods. He let it happen. Did he like it? No. But no. He but he did let it happen. But the whole time that people were worshiping all those other gods, do you know what God was still doing? Watch this. He did good and gave you from heaven rains and fruitful seasons, filling your hearts with food and gladness. God showed himself good. Think about that. For all those years, while people were worshiping idols, God still gave them rain, gave them fruitful seasons, filled hearts with food and gladness. So even while they were worshiping idols, God was still trying to be good to them and love them. Isn't that a really nice message? Yeah. What, Alice? I think why he did it is because he's very good there's, there's some words in the Bible that Jesus said in the love your enemies. Love your enemies. G Even yeah. though they weren't worshiping him and they were 
That's a really good connection. I like that. I like that. And so here we have um, this sermon that, uh, number one, we aren't gods. Listen to the gospel of God who made everything and has been good to you. He even made them. He even made them. And with these sayings, they scarce restrain the multitudes from doing a sacrifice unto them. Okay. We're going to stop there for the lesson, but I'm going to draw a little bit while we talk because I want to draw um, them bringing up a cow to get sacrificed. They don't kill it, so don't draw a dead cow. <laughs> so think about this. Draw a dead cow, draw a dead cow. Here is Paul, and he is preaching, right? And there's his tongue, and he's there's his preaching hand. Whoa. Uh, there's Paul, and he's preaching to them, and here they are. Um, oh, the priest has a funny hat on, because it's fun to draw funny hats. There's the priest. He's got his funny hat, and he's got baggy eyes, because he's an old, old priest, and he's got a beard, and a smile, and here he comes, and he's bringing on his rope. A cow. What do you think the cow is thinking? What is going on here? The cow is probably really excited that he's not going to get sacrificed, right? There's yeah. the horns. There's it's the worst cow I've ever drawn in my life. But do you know why you know it's a cow? It'll say cow. Has horns. Yeah, because they wrote the word cow on it. It helps. It helps. All right. So here is Paul. And then color him in. And Paul is preaching a sermon for them, right? And he is preaching about what? God. Okay. Did he preach about Jesus? No. He preached about Wait God. a minute. Wait a minute. Think about that. In the sermon for these guys, he talks about God, God who created everything, God who uh, has always been nice to them, even though they didn't really know about God, right? Why? Now, he probably brought up Jesus later, right? Don't you think that he eventually started talking about Jesus? Because it's Paul, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, why, why didn't he talk about Jesus first? Well, because they thought he was God. They thought he was God, not Jesus. <laughs> right, right. So, um, if he said, if there's Jesus, they would have like they were wrong on this Jesus. Right. Well, here's the thing. First, they thought he was God. Okay. Let's fix that problem. How about we just God, fix it out? God is okay. not just me. I'm not God. Oh, you can't see the X. Let me make the X a little bit stronger. I'm not God. God is actually, I'll draw an arrow, God is up there, okay? And that God is the one God who made, he made this thing, he made that thing, he made the cow, he made the, the, the well, he didn't make the funny hat, but he made what the funny hat's made out of. He made you, he made me, he made the water, he made this water, he made the island, he made all the stuff. And that's a really important thing because these guys grew up thinking that there was a God for markers and a God for pens. <laughs> you, you know what I mean, right? There's a God for this thing. There's a God for that thing. There's a God for this thing. Sometimes this is a God. You're right. Some people treat their phones like it is a God. Mm. Anyway, anyway Paul is beginning with the basics with, this, with these people. Not, not just the one guy. There was a few more. He began with the basics because before they learn about the son of God, who do they need to learn about? The God. They had to learn about creation. <laughs> they had to learn, understand the, the right idea about creation. Yeah, perfect. What does the Bible begin with? Does it begin with Jesus? No, no definitely not. It begins with God. Uh, it begins with God. In the beginning, God. God created 
Yeah, and and in the creation, we do find out when God makes man, he says, let us make man in our image. So so Jesus was there, even though we don't see the name of Jesus there. God says, let us make man in our image. Who's he talking to? Jesus. Jesus in the spirit, right? Jesus. Also, royal people often talk like, even if they're just talking about their self, they say, we and us. But there, then again, there's also like, God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. Yeah, so I think that that's the idea there, is that God was speaking about to, to, to what makes God and all of God, God. God was speaking about that. And, and Paul is helping this town figure it out. And so in this town, he really talks about Jesus and the gospel. But in this town, I can't remember where he's at. In that town, he's got to start somewhere else. And I think that that's really cool. That's really neat. All right, um, that's where we're going to end for today. And um, they almost, he, he almost didn't get them to stop sacrificing that cow. Like, no, we really, we really think you're a God. He's like, oh, let me go back and do lesson number one again. <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. All right, do you guys have any questions about that before we close? Any thoughts? What were the points that you were talking about that um, Paul was, Paul was saying or making or something? Oh, the sermon points? Yeah. All right, let me zoom in like this. I don't know exactly how I said it last time, but I'll show you here on my paper what I wrote down, get my ugly arm out of the way. All right, first, <laughs> we aren't gods, okay? Instead, we are here with the gospel about a living God who made everything shown him and did and always showed himself as good to you but doesn't that make sense that it would be very easy to move from god has always done good things for you and provided for you and then start talking about jesus because this is something actually i was thinking about in my sermon last yesterday not everybody not all of you heard that very few of you did, in fact. That's okay. God sent Jesus. Did we say, hey, God, I have a good idea. Why don't you send Jesus? No. No. It was his idea. I have the idea. It was God's idea. Did we say anything like, God, I'll give you $100 if you send Jesus? No. 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 That actually sounds like Simon the Star Siri. It's his power. It's his gift. It's nothing from us. And that's a proof of how good God is. Yeah, Alice? I guess how we can make up for it in, in, in saying thank you is being good and worshiping him. Yes. But it's interesting. We, that's how we respond. We say thank you and we worship God. Um, if I worship God five times and say thank you six times, is that enough? Is it equal? No. no. What if I no. say thank you a million times and worship a zillion times? Is that enough? No. 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 You worship you have to do it all the time. We just need to do it. We just and don't. Oh, I worshipped five times today. No, don't think like that. Don't think like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. I worshiped six times today. No. <laughs> oh, I did it seven. No, we just oh, need I, to I, I, I did it a we thousand. We need to always be thankful. We need to always right. be glorifying God. All right. Well, I'm going to close with that, and I will pick up with the story next week. Uh, next week, next class time, and I think it'll be fun. See you later, guys.